National Academy of Mobile Electronics is proud to present a series of training videos for the consumer electronics industry. Each video focuses on a specific area of training with information that has been compiled and painstakingly applied over several years. These videos will make a great addition to your video training library and if you're just getting started they will save you hundreds of hours of head scratching. So sit back, take notes and enjoy. Here's Mike Bro. Hello, my name is Mike Bro, and welcome to the National Academy of Mobile Electronics. NAME has developed a series of highly comprehensive training videos for the mobile electronics industry. Our videos will help the seasoned professional as well as the novice installer to better enhance their installation skills. We hope you enjoy our videos and if you have any questions regarding any of our other training programs, please feel free to call our toll free number during business hours. Now, let's get to work. I've been in the mobile electronics industry for over 16 years serving in several different capacities. One thing I can say about this industry is you can never know too much. A day wouldn't go by when I didn't learn a new trick about installing or a new technique to implement. Our goal here at NAME is to help you reduce the amount of time you spend on an installation by helping you eliminate the time spent on trial and error. This will make you worth more money to both yourself and to your employer. We're confident that the techniques revealed in these videos will prove effective in your quest to build a better career as a mobile electronics specialist. Fiberglass in car audio installations is becoming as commonplace as a subwoofer system. Fiberglass has been used in the industry for about two decades now and is finally finding its way into more install bays for several applications. Such applications include subwoofers and wheel wells, amp racks, and numerous types of trim panels. As a car audio installer, learning how to use fiberglass is only half the battle. To be profitable, you must be very efficient and learn how to duplicate your work in the install bay. During this video, we will show you several techniques on building fiberglass panels quickly and aesthetically. In part one of our video, we will demonstrate how to design and build a fiberglass door panel from scratch, how to mix and work with polyurethane foams, how to develop shapes and forms, how to catalyze and mix polyester resins, and finally, how to make perfect fiberglass sheets. Now, let's begin with the materials that we'll need to accomplish our fiberglass projects. Tooling gel coat is a chemical that we use to develop a perfect duplication or negative once we have designed and completed a prototype of a door panel or any number of parts that you may want to reduplicate in your install bay. It is the first layer that we put down in our molding process. It is very hard and gives our mold a durable finish. It should not be mistaken for a standard gel coat. MEKP is the catalyst that we use to catalyze our resins and gel coats. We will cover the mixing process later as it differs between materials. This is a mold release wax. It is much like car wax and is applied in much the same way. We will cover how and when to use it. Next on our list is Vaseline or petroleum jelly. This comes in handy in several areas and when you're in a pinch it works great as a mold release agent. PVA is a liquid release agent that protects your molds when they are new. We will show you the proper time to use PVA and a couple of different ways to apply it. Body filler is the most versatile shaping material we will use. The applications are endless and the results are usually flawless. You will also learn to mix and use polyurethane two-part foam. This is the most practical chemical I have found to shape and develop door panel prototypes quickly and easily. And of course, what would our projects be without polyester resins? I buy it in five gallon buckets 
because that is about the smallest size that makes economic sense. The cost for one gallon is about $20, whereas a five gallon bucket costs us about $65. Here we have fiberglass mat. I use mat for all of my fiberglass projects. It is very easy to work with and gives great strength to our panels. Fiberglass cloth is also an option during our endeavors, but is designed more for its ability to flex than for its strength. For this reason, I usually stick with mat. If you're going to be working with fiberglass, then it is a good idea to have plastic drop cloths on hand. Disposable buckets and stir sticks are common in any bay that works with fiberglass on a frequent basis. An alternative to disposables are large plastic butter tubs. These are reusable once the resin dries. I just flex the bucket and break out the old resin. A respirator with charcoal canisters is also a very important piece of safety gear to utilize during your fiberglass projects. Here are two tips when using these masks. First, while wearing the mask, if you are able to smell any vapors whatsoever, it is time to replace the canisters. And second, when not in use, store the charcoal canisters in a Ziploc bag to preserve the life of the canister. Disposable rubber gloves seem to be the most practical way to protect your hands from resins and other chemicals. It is not cost effective to buy good rubber gloves since once the resin hardens on them, they are very hard to work with. Try to use the same pair of disposables for several mixes. Potty knives are great applicators during our body filling stages. It is important to keep our knives clean during use. Sure forms are great in shaping fillers on your prototypes. Here is a basic paint gun. It is used to apply PVA during our duplication process. Here is a basic box with a cover which I use to accomplish several different sizes of door panels. We will cover its use in a few minutes. Alright, those are some of the materials and equipment we will be using throughout the video. Let's begin with a simple piece of half inch MDF or melamine and a compass. If you have a door panel to shape your pattern off of, try to keep within the lines of your panel. Here we're going to design a universal door panel that we may use time and time again for various types of vehicles. We will demonstrate its use later on in the video. Now take your jigsaw and cut your melamine to the shape that you've designed. This is the basic shape we will begin with. Remember, make two of them. You will be making a pair of mirror image panels, one for each door. Next, take your compass and adjust it out just enough to leave a lip on your panel. The second shape will be that of the grill. Here are the two pieces together with the smaller piece shape representing the insert to house your grill. If you would like your baffle to be more recessed than one half inch, use the thickness you would desire. Okay, now let's get our wooden box out and get to work on our panels. Begin by wrapping your small wooden shape with plastic cut from your plastic drop cloth. Next. Let's lay it in the box and prepare to work with our polyurethane foam. Always use rubber gloves when working with this two-part foam. It is very difficult to get off your hands, clothes, and skin. Now, let's cut a piece of plastic drop cloth to lay it in our box for the next step.
Now lay the drop cloth in below the panel we have already wrapped to be our baffle. Now we will mix up our two-part polyurethane foam. This mix is one to one, so you simply mix as much of part A as part B to get the desired results. When working with this foam out of a brand new can, it's a good idea to coat the lip of your can with a thin layer of Vaseline to ensure easy opening the next time you go to use it. Okay, once you've poured in both parts, mix vigorously to obtain a dark amber-like color. It is important to be swift during this process because your foam will start to react rather quickly. Now pour your foam evenly over your wooden panel and throughout the bottom of your box. Make sure it's spread as evenly as possible. Use a stir stick to get as much out of your bucket as possible. Once the foam starts to rise a little, drag your plastic piece over the box and then push it in on your top piece. To get a little tighter compression, hold down on the top to offer a little resistance during its rise. In about 20 to 30 minutes, your foam should be ready to begin sculpting. Begin by removing the top. Pull the plastic back. Flip your panel over and remove the wood piece that is serving as our grill impression and baffle. Now, the larger piece is what we will use to form the outer part of our panel. To shape the piece, we must screw our grill piece to our outer piece, being sure that they are laid one on top of another in exactly the same fashion in which the grill will be placed into the panel once it is finished. Once the two are screwed together, we will press the small piece back into the foam shape. Next, we will take a small coping saw and cut around the foam block trying to maintain as much a perpendicular line from the front as possible. This will give us a little more flexibility during the shaping process.
Once you have finished your cut, break the foam away, and depending on the thickness you will desire for your panel, take your saw and remove the excess from the back. Now, you want to give your panel a slightly upward and inward pitch to account for as much imaging as you possibly can when mounting your speakers into your panels. To do this, simply take your panels to your belt sander and sand the back down to the pitch that you desire. Here is the shape we are looking for on this particular panel and now we can proceed to our final shaping stage. First, let's remove the pieces we use to shape our pattern. Then, take a file and begin shaping the edges on your foam to an aesthetically pleasing shape. You may also use your finished sander with a fairly coarse sandpaper to expedite this process. Here is what your panel should look like before we begin our fiberglass process. It's important to take your time when making your prototype panels since the originals only need to be made once. Okay, we're ready to begin with our fiberglassing, but before we begin, let's take a few precautions to protect our table. Take a roll of paper, or you can use some old newspaper, and lay them down on the table that you will begin working on. Now, we will lay a piece of plate glass down, which we will use to provide an excellent removable finish for our fiberglass projects. Alright, now we're going to prepare our glass with any one of the release agents that we talked about earlier. In this case, we will use petroleum jelly. This will allow us to remove our fiberglass projects once they have fully cured. Other options as release agents, once again, are mold release wax, and of course PVA, which may be applied via spray or brush. Alright, let's continue by laying down fiberglass mat and create a solid flat panel out of fiberglass to serve as the back of our enclosure which we will be creating. These flat panels come in handy for several different uses. Only your imagination will limit what you can do with it.
I roll my resin on my mat in this application for even distribution and speed. A plastic paint roller works great in these applications and is reusable. The roller I choose is the most inexpensive one I can buy. You could use a small roller in some applications, but for ours we will use the larger roller. Next we have to mix our resins and catalyze it before we do the next step. So let's take a look at a simple chart to get the proper mixtures when using polyester resins. Temperature and humidity will affect the drying time of our resins. The warmer the atmosphere, the faster the drying time. It is very important to try to follow this chart as closely as possible. If you mix your resins too hot, several undesirable effects may occur. Cracking, shrinking, warping, and a very brittle finish, just to name a few. Don't mix your res resins too vigorously to avoid air bubbles, but do mix it thoroughly to ensure it is properly catalyzed. Now, with your mat in place, begin to roll your polyester resins over it and into your mat. It is important to use just enough resin to fully impregnate your mat. A glossy finish is an indication that too much resin was used. Take a paintbrush and stipple any and all air bubbles that may exist. This is what we mean when we say stipple. Now it's time to lay our mat down over the foam shape that we have formed. This layup takes some time if you want it to turn out just right. In this application we will be using a paintbrush. Continue to stipple all of the bubbles once you have fully impregnated all of the glass. Bubbles are fairly easily detectable and add weak spots to the panels. Here is our hardened shape fully cured. To separate our forms from the glass, we simply take a chisel and scrape it between the glass and your forms.
As you can see, you get a smooth finish. You could almost say it's as smooth as glass. Now we'll take our form and with our air saw we'll trim the flashing away from the outer edge. Once you have fully removed the flashing from around the edge, take your finish sander and smooth out around the sides. Now that we have the sides of the flashing taken down even with the sides of your panel, we need to remove the foam from inside your panel. There will be some residue left in your first form, but from here on in, every form is production line quality. Now that we have our foam taken out, it's time to attach the back of your enclosure. There are several ways to do this. For now, I'll show you the quickest, most effective method I've found. First, I lay another 2 ounce mat onto the flat piece of fiberglass panel that we've made. Next, I take short strips of fiberglass mat and dip them into my resin and lay them up all the way around the edge of my enclosure. Another thing you could try is to soak only half of your strip and lay it into your enclosure and then let it harden, then soak the second half and apply the back. For now, I will show you a little quicker method. Once you have lined the outer edge with soaked mat folded in half, it's time to apply the flat panel which will be our back. Once it's in place, I just flip the front panel over onto it. The idea here is for the strips that you have soaked and folded into the front panel will unfold fusing the two pieces together. This method has proven very effective for me. Once the resin is hardened, we can cut the flashing the same way we did earlier in the video. Now that we have trimmed the flat panel to fit the front, it's time to begin our body filling stage. This process takes a few steps. Our initial coats are for any shaping that might be needed 
so it is important to build up the filler as much as possible in the areas that needed. It is also important that during the shaping stage that you try to mirror image the pair to match as closely as possible. The sure form works well in shaping the body filler in its early stages. One thing about body filler shaping with a sure form is you must shape the filler before it is fully cured or it will be too hard to shape and it will take numerous hours to sand. After the sure form, take your finished sander and smooth out any other high spots on your panel before adding the next layer. To get a sharp flat surface on the inner edge of your fiberglass panel, it's good to take a die grinder and with a drum sander attach, take it around the inner lip. Sometimes the inner lip is hard to fill with a putty knife and get a real smooth finish. So one approach I take in getting a consistent edge around the base of the inner lip is to take some body filler and with your finger apply it to the edge. This edge is a lot easier to sand and shape than the uneven surfaces left by the putty knife. Once we have finished the final positive panels, we can start the molding process. To make a negative of a particular panel, we must first apply a layer of mold release wax to our positive panel. The proper procedure is to apply the wax, then once it is dry, remove the wax, then you're ready for your next step. To ensure the clean release of my positive panel from my mold or negative, I will then coat my positive with a layer of PVA. I have applied PVA both with a paint sprayer and by paintbrush. I prefer spray because the drying time is considerably shorter. Both ways will work if you don't have access to a spray gun. PVA is usually used during the duplication process to protect the wax in your mold during the first few uses. Once you have built up the wax in your mold, it isn't necessary to use PVA to release the positive. PVA is also water soluble, so it washes off your panels with soap and water. Now that our PVA is dry, we can begin making our mold. The first step after applying the mold release is to mix and apply a thin layer of gel coat to our positive panel. This is the ratio chart for catalyst to gel coat and this is the most critical chemical mix during our molding process. The wrong mix of catalyst can cause the gel coat to shrink and crack or not cure at all. It is also important not to apply too much gel coat to the positive panel or shrinking and cracking may also result.
Just a thin uniform layer will do the trick in making a perfect first layer and duplicating any shape. The next step, after our gel coat has fully cured, is to begin reinforcing our mold with fiberglass mat and resin. An important note here is never lay mat and resin down onto gel coat until it is fully cured or you will get what is called alligator skin and the molding process will have to be started all over again. Remember, in reinforcing your molds, you should always take your time. If you try to lay your glass down too thick, too fast, it will usually heat up and bow or buckle, making it impossible to duplicate your positives exactly. So in this case, lay your mat down one layer at a time in about two ounce layers. Laying each one after the other has fully cured. I usually make my molds four ounces thick for so small molds and six ounces to eight ounces thick for larger molds. Now, while you're laying your mat down over your gel coat, try to work out all of the bubbles. Bubbles in your glass reinforcement will eventually cause your gel coat to crack and break away. Once we have finished laying up our glass, let's break it away from our glass platform. From here we can trim the flashing from around the edges. Leaving a small lip around the outer edge of our mold is acceptable. Once the flashing has been trimmed away, take your finish sander and sand your mold flush with the back of your panel. This will ensure your mold will be exactly gauged to the same depth as your positive. Now we will pop our positive away from our mold and the process is finished. Now we have a mold and can duplicate this panel in a half an hour which includes drying time. Let's go through the duplication process. To make a panel using the mold is much like the procedure we went through to make the mold. 
First, we will apply two coats of wax to our mold. Make sure you remove the first layer before you apply the second coat. Next, we will protect the wax that we laid down by coating our mold with PVA. Again, remember, PVA should be used the first few times when you use a new mold to ensure a good wax buildup on our mold for ease of releasing your panel once it has cured. Now our mold is ready for its first layup. Generally, my fiberglass panels consist of nothing more than polyester resin and fiberglass mat. Simply mix your polyester resin to a moderate mix and use two layers of 4 ounce mat for large panels or three layers of 2 ounce mat for smaller to medium sized panels. Here is our panel fully cured in the mold. Before we remove it, we simply take our air saw and cut our glass as close to the mold as possible without cutting into your mold. Next, take your finish sander and sand down the remaining way to your mold. Now, just pop it out of the mold And there you have it, a duplicate of the panel we just built. Now, all we have to do is put a back on it much the same way we did earlier in the video. This is a universal panel that can now be duplicated in a moment's notice. Let me show you just one example of how to use this panel on a door and possibly how to create another shape altogether. Here is a Jeep Cherokee door panel. We are going to put a pair of ADS 320i's in our door panel using fiberglass panels as the housing. The idea here is to give our door panels a custom factory look and it will also remain inconspicuous from a security standpoint. Next, to stay within the cosmetic boundaries of the door panel itself, we choose to cut along this line and remove the panel from this point down. Now we will lay our lower half over a piece of one half inch MDF and cut the pieces exactly. The snaps on the back of our panels to hold the panel to the door will be the same snaps we will use to hold our panels in place. If you've watched our woodworking video, we show you how to duplicate shapes and in this case it will come in handy. Take your cardboard panel and lay it over your MDF panel and mark where your clips were lined up in the door panels.
Now let's countersink our marks for where our snaps will press into. Next, press your buttons into the hole. Finally, fill in the tops with body filler to hold the snaps in place. Next, you are going to attach your fiberglass panel to your MDF and shape your fiberglass panel to your wood with body filler. Here is the finished product, filled and sanded and ready to be finished. Let's see how well our panel fits on our door at this time. Notice the image tweeter pod we have installed in the baffle of our speaker panel. We will show you an imaging technique later on in the video. Now we will prepare to attach the upper door panel to the lower door panel, but before we do we must vinyl wrap the panel and dye the vinyl and the grill to match the door. Here we have a wrapped and dyed door panel. Notice the countersunk edge in our panel. This is where our upper panel will be attached. Now let's attach the two using an air stapler. Once we have finished stapling, we will glue the edge down. Here is the finished product. Now the only thing we have left to do is attach it to the door. If all goes well, all of our snaps should line up and our panel will fit just like the stock panel. Now if you choose to, you could make a separate mold for this particular panel and the next time a Jeep Cherokee comes in, you simply have a fiberglass layup and in a matter of minutes your panels are finished. Now here's a panel finished and installed on the door. This is just one of many panels you can duplicate when you create universal panels for your install bay. Okay, let's recap what we just learned in part one. We covered creating shapes with polyurethane foam, making fiberglass positives, making molds to duplicate a shape, and creating a door panel from a universal shape. Now, let's move on to part two in our fiberglass training. In part two, we will cover building a tweeter pod from a block of wood, how to create an image panel using a single brad nail, how to shape your pods using body filler, and how to use your mirrored pods. First, we'll start with a couple of pieces of half inch MDF rectangles, a three inch hole saw, a putty knife, body filler and hardener, a compass, a brad nailer, a boss jigsaw, and a finish sander. Now, Let's draw a radius on one end of your pod. Next, let's take our jigsaw and cut along that radius.
Okay, here's what we have so far. Put your panels on the drill press and with the 3 inch hole saw, drill through each piece. Save the circular pieces once your holes have been cut. Here are our two pieces with the pieces of wood that we cut out of them. Now we want to create mini tweeter pods with an imaging effect. So our goal is to go on the door and aim where it is we want our tweeters to fire and lock the pieces in that position. To do that, simply take our brad nailer and staple a nail through the top of each pod. Next, fix each pod in the image that you desire. Once you have set each panel in the position you like, attach some duct tape to the back of your pods. This will help keep your body filler in place once you begin the filling process. Now we're going to mix up our body filler and begin filling our pods, keeping our image circles as stationary as possible. One small mix at the beginning will suffice to hold your circles in place. Once that is cured, you can begin the shaping process with your pods. This process takes a little time, but these pods are very useful and can be sold at a decent profit once they're on your showroom floor. During the sanding process, keep the body filler as flat on your circle and as close to the edge as possible. Sand and fill until you get the desired results. Now that you have finished your filling and sanding, the last step is we must re-drill our holes in the image fashion using our drill press. Just set the table on your drill press to cut through your pods in the direction you want your tweeters to fire. Line up the pilot bit with the existing hole from the original piece you have drilled out in the 3 inch hole saw. Proceed to cut through. Don't forget to clamp your work down. Now that we've drilled the holes in our pods, let's take a look at how they look. These pods will need a little bit more sanding and filling, but for the most part, this is a fairly good look at what the results will be. These particular pods fit the MB Quart tweeters perfectly. Here is a shot of what these pods look like installed on the door panel. These pods also may be duplicated in the fashion we discussed earlier in our molding section. I'm sure by now we have answered quite a few questions you may have had about fiberglass. All you need now is good imagination and a little patience and the possibilities are endless. Now let's recap what we've learned in our fiberglass video. In part one we covered making shapes from scratch using two part polyurethane foam creating a positive with fiberglass, the molding process for duplication, and door panel applications. 
In part two, we learned using wood fillers and body fillers to make image shapes and how to apply these shapes. Another training session come and gone. It's a good idea to view all training videos several times for maximum comprehension. Then view them every several months to refresh your skills. Remember, the more you learn, the more you'll earn. On behalf of the staff here at NAME, I would like to thank you again for your support. I'm Mike Bro. Goodbye for now. This concludes our video presentation. For suggestions for new videos or the release of other training videos, call NAME 